right, welcome to Sequel Top Shelf. This is the very first episode of our whiskey tasting and review. In here, we pour whiskey. These are fun. Let me be honest with you, Matt. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this day for a long time. It is very rarely that I drink on a work day. It's like a reward. What we're going to do on this channel is we are going to taste and review some very interesting whiskeys that mm -hmm. we pick up along the way. Bourbon, right? Yeah. Um, I am a habitual whiskey drinker. I and I'm probably. a collector. I'll say I'll say I'm more of a collector because I'll get to I'll get to the halfway mark in the bottle and I'll be like, mm, I'm gonna stop and go find something else. Yeah, I cannot do that. <laughs> so sometimes I will come and steal from Matt's collection, but uh, I'm a drinker. So you're gonna get two different perspectives here <laughs> for sure. Uh, before we dive into our first review, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how to taste whiskey. Mm. Buy a drink. Great stuff, this bourbon. There's a lot of nonsense out there about drinking and tasting whiskey. So I thought today, as as an episode one, it'd be helpful just to dispel just, some just of explain that it. garbage yeah. and talk about how you taste whiskey, how you drink it and experience it, and really kind of how it evolves for you personally. Because that's the biggest thing. Tasting whiskey is a personal mm -hmm, thing. Very it much subjective. So. It's going to taste different to him and I versus our palates and how we smell the whiskey. Water. Let's just do a review at the same time. Because, I mean, I don't know how we're going to get around this. Right? I don't know. It's, it's your first experience, so we need to really get that feedback, too. So today what we're starting with is a Broken Barrel from Broken Barrel Whiskey Co. This is the good stuff. This is 116 proof, guys. This is the real deal. Super strong a bit of a here. Burn. Okay, that wasn't so good. The mash bill is 70% corn, 21% rye, and 9% malted barley. The oak bill, which is this is interesting. This is kind of their whole thing, is uh, ex bourbon barrels is 40%. So interesting. They're using okay. older mm -hmm. bourbon barrels. 40% new French oak barrels and 20% sherry cask oak, which is pretty traditional. Um, but their whole thing is is using these small batches that mm -hmm. they create, putting them into different types of oak barrels throughout the process to create this very distinct flavor profile. Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. This should be pretty delicious. This is from their batch number seven, and it's made with pur purpose. Made with passion and purpose. Passion and it's purpose. It's even got a signature on here. It's wow. a beautiful bottle, beautiful cork bottle. I want to say this ran me, hmm, I can't remember if this was about $48, something like that. I won't hold you to it. Yeah, yeah. So not too expensive, uh, but I did want to try it out. It definitely looked interesting. It's got a great color to it, but uh, let's pour some. All righty. What you want to do is with the glass, nice clean glass, so you have a very easy uh, way to, to see in for the color, the caramelized. That's right. Caramelized nature. Um, you're also looking at the what they call legs which is as you tilt the glass and then bring it back, you can see just kind of the remnants of it. And usually, and correct me if I'm wrong, to my knowledge, the longer the legs take to travel back down usually means the higher the proof. That is pretty consistent. Look at you. I mean, you're, you're bringing all this. This is some detailed <laughs> top level I'm surprising you here. Shit. Yeah. So <laughs> I think he's, he's sandbagging a little bit about his whiskey I'm carrying knowledge. over some of the wine facts that I know and hoping that they're true. <laughs> so we'll just we'll pretend that. But, Similar yeah. in drinking fashions. Um, so Broken Barrel, Whiskey Co. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very, I would say mild color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very it, soft. I was just thinking very soft caramel. Yeah, soft. I, I would I would almost say like amber. Like if you've mm -hmm. seen, you know, I'm, I'm thinking now back to the Jurassic Park. Yeah, amber. There's no bugs in little, this no one. No bugs though. in it. He's a digger. But this is very much that amber color. Um, you know, you can swirl it. That's not really a necessity for whiskey, but the smelling is probably mm. the biggest indicator of determining whether or not you know what you're doing. And, and that is really, as you breathe in, 
one, you don't want to jam your nose down in it, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be too close. You want it towards the top here. And you might see people start with one nostril, move to the other. But the important thing is to leave your mouth open. Mm -hmm. That allows those fumes to actually get into your your nasal passages down into your mouth where they're just barely hit, hitting your throat, your tongue area, and you want to A full smell. olfactory experience. Yes, there. you want to smell on it and then pull away. Let your nose clean out, revisit it. You know, you're going to have different mm. airways, you know, clearings through either nostril, right? One's yeah. going to be better than the other, so that's why you use both nostrils. You just want that... Mm, right in right in your nose mm. let it kind of sit there and then when you hear people say on the nose that's literally just them telling you what they smell yeah so matt how is broken barrel co whiskey on the nose well the two main things that i'm i'm getting is the toastiness there's a toasty wood kind of essence to it but then also the i think it's just because that's the higher proof it's it's got a little bit of a quick quickness to the burn feeling yeah. So that's a good that's a good thing as well. So this he's right. This is high proof. If you are smelling or tasting uh, a lower proof, let's just call it mm -hmm. ninety and below whiskey, uh, and you start to really get that kind of like bite to the mm -hmm. smell, that is an indicator of the of the flavor and taste profile. But also, you may just have your nose a little bit far in there. That's not the case with this oh, one because it's <laughs> yeah. Oh, just, that was the wrong way to do it. Just dip your nose in there. <laughs> But uh, if your if your eyes ever start to water a little bit, you're you're definitely inhaling a little bit too strong. Um, so back off of that just a little bit, and let it just barely into the nose. Um, yeah, so just a little well, pointer. Yeah, there. learn learn a little bit new there. And I don't know if that's indicative of the whiskey itself for this being that high proof. That even, I mean, even a little backed off, it still still has. I can still get the little bit of a. You sizzle, know what I think it is. I think it's. It's a blend of this rye and barley that I'm really smelling. Mm. I had to look at it again because I thought at first it was the sherry cask oak that okay. I was really smelling through there, but it's not. It's a su it's sweeter than that. Mm -hmm. So for me on the nose, I'm getting more of that. I'm getting that kind of full bodied barley mm -hmm. smell more than anything but it is it is sweet but you can definitely tell that this is gonna bite yeah so that leads to the next part which is tasting right mm -hmm. on the palate is the term that people use for what they taste and a lot of the times when i'm experimenting buying new whiskeys I'll get into something that smells so different than how it tastes, and it oh, always yeah. surprises me. Yeah, this one I I haven't given you any indication of of the taste profile here, but I can't yeah. wait to see your reaction because this was one that totally surprised me. Interesting. Okay. On the nose versus on the palate, almost you could have blindfolded me and, and convinced me that it was two different whiskeys. <laughs> Interesting. So okay. For me, totally different. Mm -hmm. But on the nose for the for this for me, sweet barley a little bit mm -hmm. i get some of that kind of high proof kind of almost bottled in bond type yeah, smell yeah. to it right mm -hmm. um, but i do think that that's just the high proof and um yeah i can't wait to see yeah. what you have to think I'm about just the definitely getting profile. the i'm definitely getting the toasty i can smell the sweet toasty, the toast is a toasty, good toasty, interesting uh, that's mm -hmm. that char from the barrels so that's interesting yeah. that you're picking up on that i don't so much get that Hmm. Yeah, toasty caramel, a little bit of sweetness there, but I'm I'm ready to dive. You ready? In. Yeah, let's do it. No, no, don't just hork it down. I get where you're coming from that it's definitely different than it smells. So, wow, yeah. So on on the sip there, you'll notice I took a very long time. That wasn't me trying to mimic a politician with a, a water glass. <laughs> that was because what you really want to do is make sure you're also inhaling with that sip mm -hmm. so you want to get one more chance to really get the nose in there breathe in that profile let the whiskey cascade over hopefully the front of your tongue towards the back sit there for a minute and you may hear real southern whiskey drinkers will tell you there's almost like a chewing technique to drinking whiskey yeah uh, which is much different than than wine which is you kind of let it swirl across all areas of the tongue so it hits that full kind of sweet sour salty all those places and then you almost kind of slow swallow mm 
mm-hmm. which looks sometimes like a chew. <laughs> so that's where that I think that comes from there. Um, but you'll hear some people refer to it that way. But but yeah, this is one of those whiskeys that just so different for me personally mm-hmm. on the nose versus on the palate. What do you what are you tasting? I'm detecting nuttiness. I'm gonna have another one. Um, I like the. It's got a a bit of a creaminess to it. Um, that's it's like a creamy caramel. Um, and then definitely the higher proof comes pretty quick, at least for me. Um, but the the they creaminess, call that a Kentucky hug. I'm pretty sure Kentucky hug. That yeah. little bite and then that warm that hits. This definitely has this on the front end. Um, but the finish is very smooth. So going down, it's super, super smooth. Yeah, I yeah. get, I get a very rich, almost toffee flavor out of this. So I'm getting like it's it's almost like that caramel, but it's a little different. It's a little more dry uh, taste okay. for me. So I'm getting that sweet, almost uh, not molasses, you know, but it's it's close. So it, it's yeah, it's like I that. See that? It's like that toffee for me. So getting kind of a butterscotch flavor, but I definitely am feeling an interesting layer of, I think I'm noticing the barrel process, the Mm -hmm. barreling process. Yeah. I am tasting very interesting notes there of like, I wouldn't say that it's, it's floral by any means, Mm -mm. but I, I do. It's like that fresh vanilla. Like you said, vanilla, Mm -hmm. I think I'm getting a fresh vanilla. So not like a vanilla bean flavor, but like Mm -mm. a, I don't know, just like a really crisp, almost cold vanilla ice cream. If you, if you, I'm, I'm picturing like that. a heavy, heavy vanilla waffle cone almost because mm. it's got that, yeah, that caramely, cone element is almost that, caramely, that caramely that I'm wa- about. waffle. Yeah. That's it's a very great way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is good, man. And at 116 proof, you know, I would sip this pretty easily. It's not something that I would say is intrusive. It's not something that's going to knock you out. It's surprising on the palate. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, preferably, I like a little water in my whiskey. I know some people think that's a sin. I <laughs> like a little bit of water and a little more than a few drops uh, or on the rocks. And this on the rocks, I've had it. Um, mm-hmm. Full disclosure is delicious. So yeah. big cube. For me, for me, I'm in a similar boat where I'm I'm newer to the straight or sorry, the neat sipping with no, no ice in it. But I like the ability to almost like wake it up, if you will, with, with the yeah. ice cube, because, yeah. um, the flavor profile is unique and you don't want to, um, you don't want to detract from what the actual full caramelize. Cause when it's creamy and caramely coming straight out of the bottle, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. But I feel like just adding the, uh, the ice, at least for me, brings it alive and wakes it up a little bit more to where you can almost get those hidden flavors a little bit to where almost maybe in another episode we do a taste side by side of mm. like are there does the flavor profile change and we can actually see you know how does that work i would argue a hundred percent i mean for me it's it's night and day like this neat as mm-hmm. we're drinking it um it is almost a different bourbon as when mm-hmm. it's on a big big chunk of ice for me um (laughs) now maybe that's because i am more of the cigar and beverage uh out by you know the fire having a meal sure so the coolness just helps me enjoy it a little bit more but Mm -hmm. yeah definitely distinct but i mean what do you think i mean how do you like it overall the flavor profile is definitely up my alley i think if this bottle were on my shelf, it would probably last a little bit longer just because of the high proofness of mm-hmm. how often would I probably reach for it. Yep. But the flavor profile, the creaminess is wonderful. It's delicious. Uh, this is a limited release cask strength. Um, and again, made with broken oak staves. So quite interesting the way they're utilizing uh, the the barreling and the, the uniqueness of the barreling process to get that flavor profile. I like it. Um, I wonder what the findability score is because that's a big thing, at least here in, in the South, in yeah. Nashville, like bourbons uh, have just become so hard to find that are mm-hmm. that are unique and different. Um, you can find all the common ones always in your local shops, but I wonder what the findability score of this guy would be. That is a good question. Um, I think I have seen it out there online in a few places, so I think there's there's some decent distribution behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be curious as well, but 
I would say that if you can find it, pick up a bottle. Uh, there are some different um, varieties, variety lines that Broken Barrel has. Um, but I would suggest this one if you can find it. Again, that is the Cask Strength Limited Release, 116 proof. And as far as a barrel score here, yeah, what would you? What would you? Are we doing the five barrels or the ten barrels? What would we decide? Let's do five barrels. Five I think barrels. ten is getting too wishy washy because I like, mean seven to nine on a ten scale is like sure, the same thing, right? That's, so that's let's do a one close. to five. Okay. One to on five, one to five. Are we supposed to agree on a one to five or are we supposed to just have a... I hope not for the viewer's sake. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I think for me, and are we doing full barrels only or half barrels also? You can do half barrels okay. for sure. So for me, this one definitely falls, I'd say a strong three and a half. Okay. And three and a half. Three and a half barrels probably, and again, this is personal, is probably just the proof. Yeah. It's... Yeah. The flavor profile is wonderful, which is why it instantly goes to three. Yeah. And the creaminess and the uniqueness of the flavor gives it that extra half, but it's not going to go any farther for me because yeah. of the proof. Um, That's the, you know what? I can't argue with any of that. I think for me, it's at four barrels and the proof does come into play as well. 116. Mm -hmm. It's not something that a lot of, you know, friends and family that come over, I won't break this bottle out a lot because yeah. it is a little bit strong for most people's palates. Um, but I think it's delicious. I think the, the flavor profile, all the flavors you're getting pulled out that you can taste, I, I truly think it's attributable mm -hmm. to their barreling process. Um, I give it a four. I give it a four barrels out of five. Sure. Uh, for me personally, I like higher proof. Uh, mm -hmm. I like this little bit of a warm hug that I get from this. Yeah. And the flavor is so interesting that I believe that with water on ice. And that, know, that me, could potentially getting, change my score, too. Yeah, you're getting a I different whiskey, it, I think, in, in different drinking scenarios, which is always, for me, a mm -hmm. plus. If I tried it in a different aspect, it could potentially change the score, probably for the better, uh, because I do like what I'm getting into with this. Um, but the just that, that note of the the hug... Uh, could potentially change for me as a as a drinker because as the time evolves, uh, your palate changes over time. Yep, as 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 that goes, um, the when I start started in drinking wines, uh, I started with stuff that's super sweet like rieslings and all that that kind of avenue. And now I really don't like them yeah. because my palate changed. Yeah. So the bourbon bourbon for me is is newer uh, on the newer side of but. Uh, love it and easily got into the hobby of of that and um, would definitely see that my palate could change so whenever you're thinking of, of a whiskey that you've tried in the past and it's been a good amount of years maybe that you've mm -hmm. had not had it don't just assume that it's going to be the same for you your palate yeah. could have changed and and you as a drinker one of maybe maybe one of our last facts about how to taste whiskey is don't just assume that it's always going to be that way because things slightly change in different right. years yep. and then you as a drinker also change your palate changes and, and evolves over time well this has been broken barrel by broken barrel whiskey co this is their cask strength and i gave it a four barrels out of five matt gave it a three, three and, and a half. half barrels out of five um so there it is i hope you pick it up if it's near you and we will drop a price in here uh in the b-roll as well so you know what you can pick it up for Time for that gratuitous B-roll. <laughs> Catch you next time.